Michael Voris will be in Toronto this Saturday, November 8th, speaking about the future of Catholicism. Click the link to register today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. This past weekend, the Archdiocese of New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan announced the largest parish closings ever to hit the Archdiocese. More than, more than 100 parishes will be consolidated into around 50, representing a huge shrinking. And while New York may signal a catastrophic failure for the church, New York can only be viewed as one case among many. It just gets the headlines because it's in New York. Dioceses after dioceses have gone through this same shrinking, shuttering parishes by the thousands. From 1990 to 2000, that 10-year cycle, there was a net loss in the United States of 700 parishes. In the next 10-year cycle, from 2000 to 2010, there was a near doubling of that earlier net loss as over 1,300 more parishes were dumped. And so far in this current 10-year cycle of 2010 to 2020, which we aren't even halfway through yet, there has been one announcement after another from all over the country of parish shutterings totaling in the hundreds again. And remember, there's still six more years to go in this cycle. And these hundreds that have closed does not yet include the many slated for closing in the next two years in New York, Philadelphia, Detroit, Boston, and so forth. Even before those closings take effect, there are now less Catholic parishes in the United States than there were in 1965. Think about that for a moment. There are now less Catholic parishes in the United States than there were in 1965. There's not one single indicator anywhere that this course is going to be reversed. In fact, from a purely business perspective, every indicator is that it will get even worse. Why? Because the simple reality is this. Parishes are, so to speak, open for business because there are parishioners buying the goods. Since this is all being done for almost entirely financial reasons, then that is the lens through which we must look at this. The customer base, meaning Catholics who go to the parishes and buy the goods, is aging rapidly. Most people sitting in the pews these days, the ones keeping many of the parishes open, are older, some of them significantly. In the next five to seven years, many of these customers will no longer be around because they will have died, which means the parish roles will have shrunk because those people are not being replaced by any younger people or customers. And since the lion's share of parishioners are in fact older, this storm will break upon the church much sooner than later. The rate of closings is only going to increase and the raw number of parishes will continue to shrink. That's the reality, and you deal with the reality by taking a serious look at the causes. But Cardinal Dolan, and more than likely a number of other prelates, refuse to deal with the reality of the situation head on. In announcing the closings, the Cardinal said that the Archdiocese of New York was dying so it could experience a rising from the dead. Now, there's no way to know for certain whether he actually believes that, or he's making a statement of hope, or is he's just trying to soften the blow and offer some words of compassion and caring and solace for the many New York Catholics greatly saddened by all this, while deep in his heart he knows it's not really true. But whatever the case, the reality is there isn't a single shred anywhere, any evidence whatsoever to suggest that anything even resembling a rising is going to occur, and not just in New York, but anywhere. Many bishops in the United States are in their 60s, meaning in about 10 years or less, they will be gone, and the next round of bishops will move up into their roles. And here's the stark truth of the matter. The next round of bishops is going to be facing this same cataclysmic event, the disappearing Catholic Church in America. Nothing Cardinal Dole or any other bishop currently in office with less than 10 years to go before death or resignation 
will be able to do anything to stem this tide in any significant manner. There are, they are simply ill-equipped to change with a culture that cares more about sex than sanctity. So the problem will continue on their watch currently and will be inherited by their successors. What they could do is prepare the ground for a rising, an actual rising, a resurrection, by getting back to making their diocese actually Catholic, authentically Catholic, as opposed to Catholic light or Protestantized Catholic. But again, there isn't a single indicator that any such vision has grabbed hold. The church spread and conquered an empire, established the most prosperous, powerful civilization in the history of the world because it created saints by the thousands, tens of thousands. But the current reality is that many leaders in the church have shelved the mission of supernatural mission of the church in favor of accommodating and getting along with the world, suffering from that misguided notion that being friendly and nicey-nice with your enemy, the world, will have them packing the pews. Sidelining the truth never has good long-term effects, as we are witnessing right now. If there's going to be any resurrection to speak of in coming decades, the ground for, groundwork for it needs to be laid right now. Preach the truth, the glorious Catholic truth in all its completeness. Preach the cross and its meaning and its power. Yep, you will continue to lose many people in the short term. What will be caused is a full revelation that many who do actually still go to Mass, the customers, don't actually believe the faith anymore than those who've already left. These ones still sitting here just hang around for nostalgic reasons, but they aren't discernibly Catholic in their hearts or their souls. They reject church teaching. These people are keeping the numbers, the customer headcount, if you will, artificially high. They may be in the pews, but they aren't in the church. So when the bishops start preaching the truths of the church instead of just church of nice garbage, these headcount Catholics will leave as well. And then, and only then, will we have a real picture, the accurate portrait of the condition of the church, a sort of baseline. The few faithful will, all that will be all that will be left, and then the rebuilding can be done by the next round of bishops. Yes, things will get worse in terms of finances and numbers and business models, but that's going to happen anyway in the next 10 years or so as all the headcount Catholics die and are not replaced. So this medicine is going to be administered one way or the other. Plan A is leave things as they are currently, pretending some resurrection is going to happen magically. Plan B is lay the groundwork for it now. Either the current round of bishops and cardinals will have to do this and feel the pain, or the next round will roughly 10 years from now. Seeing as how many of the current round of bishops have actually contributed to this disaster, it only seems fair that they man up and take the medicine instead of kicking the can down the road to their successors. If they don't, the next round of bishops may very well be managing the going out of business sale for the entire church in America. Pray for the church and her leaders, my fellow Catholics. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. In a world called Earth, which is sort of mostly green and belongs to God. Well, it, it's actually mostly blue, like 71% blue. Comes an all new adventure, all about nature. Watch our new show, God's Blue Earth. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure thing. Watch our new show, God's Green Earth where this guy, Rodney, talks about exciting things such as trees, birds, clay, bread, and goats. Cause nature, discover exotic places like this park, someone's kitchen, the sky, a swimming pool, some guy's backyard, and this majestic mountain range. 
watch the CMTV crew drink unpasteurized goat's milk. Strut like they got no cares in the world. And make popcorn! Witness the totally believable performances as our actors react to the blistering heat, pain and suffering, farm animals and cute kitties. Learn valuable skills like how to water plants, and then watch them grow. Wow. Enjoy 13 episodes shot in full 1080 HD, which is a huge step up from our old cameras. Ew. Starry. Our very beautiful and talented host of God's Green Earth, Rodney Pelletier. What do you think, yeah? This guy, the Wolf Pack, AKA the Wolf Sisters. Seriously, their last name is Wolf. And this other guy. So sign up for a premium account and tune in this October for God's Blue Green Earth. Cause nature. <laughs>